Beach. Pretty much everyone's been to the beach. Unless you're from Bosnia. <laughs> Croatians took it. Did you know that here in Australia, you could sleep on a different beach every single night for 25 years? Different beach every night for 25 years. And you probably would still have more beaches to check out. But today in particular, we're going to be heading up to Stockton Sand Dunes. Stockton is a massive desert that stretches 32 Ks along the coast of New South Wales. There's a lot of different ways to photograph sand dunes. It's hard to judge the depth between sand dunes, so they can create really cool optical illusions to try and photograph. Untouched sand is really nice to photograph because you have so many nice rippling textures through it. Or you could even experiment with different lighting. You can take advantage of the natural contrast between the light and shadows. During the day, you have like the rough and dramatic and towards the evening you have soft and diffused, or even adding a human element can add a sense of scale and perspective to show how empty and alone you can be, depending on what kind of emotion you're going for. Or you can use props. Not too long ago, we actually filmed a photo battle up at these sand dunes where we brought down like fire sticks or different types of lights, and that can be a way to just add some interest into your photos and just make them more engaging. Or, you know, you could not do any of that. What you should actually do is call up your mate Jack and get him to bring his Land Cruiser. What happens when you leave your car in the Australian sun? <laughs> he left it there for 20 minutes. So this is an old city built here after World War II. It's called Tin City. And yeah, it's just a bunch of little houses out here in the desert. They just plonked out here and it's all private property. So you're not really allowed to go any closer than this and get up close to them, unfortunately. Like, do they get power? Do you get mail here? Like, how's the little mailman gonna get here? Like, deliver your package? Like, where do you get your groceries from? Like. It reminds me of a movie, but I don't know which movie. Mad Max, maybe? I think maybe Mad Max, yeah. yeah. It's insane. My goal for today is to try and take really minimalistic drone photos. I've picked Jack's Land Cruiser in particular because it's already got this sort of sandy beige color, which works really well with the sand dunes. So I'm gonna try my best to take as many minimalistic style photos as I can. So handy having the tray here on the back. 77 mil circular polarizer, 7200 f2.8. This is gonna be my weapon of choice for today. The 7200 is just gonna be the most versatile lens with the conditions that we have today, especially because we're in sandy conditions. Anytime you're changing your lens, it's just good practice just to keep your camera up like this, and then your lens goes on. And that's just gonna try and reduce the amount of dust particles going into your sensor. Let's begin.
Overall, I would say that was a pretty successful photo shoot. Some of the main problems I faced though trying to do this was trying to place the car actually became really difficult. It seems like you could just drive the car anywhere over the sand dunes and it'll be fine. But a lot of the time, like I said at the start of the video, sand dunes create optical illusions, especially when you're standing right in front of them and even more so when you're driving. So we're driving around and I'm trying to direct Jack. Yeah, and just, you can roll it back because you can't really notice the tracks here. While flying my drone in the car. So I've got the drone up, it's wasting battery, it's stinking hot, it's like 36 degrees or something like that. And we're trying to drive around the sand dunes, but there's certain parts we couldn't go down because there's the potential risk of rolling the car. And this is not like a light vehicle. This thing weighs like almost four tons. The chances of rolling your four wheel drive doing this sort of stuff is actually pretty high. On top of that, we had to be a bit more strategic about where we were gonna place the car to save me some time in Photoshop, I didn't want too many footprints and other tire tracks in my shot. I wanted it to seem like it was very natural that we drove the car up onto one of the dunes and it was just the singular tracks of the car. I don't want tracks in and around and you know, in the frame. The drone I used for all my photos was the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. Even when the first Mavics came out and even the Phantoms, they were already pretty idiot proof to fly. But now even when you get one of these drones, the controller has its own built-in screen, which used to be an, an extra option you had to pay for, um, but now that's just like the standard controller with the screen in it, which is just super nice. You don't have to try and shove your phone in it and it's all janky and wonky and it gets disconnected. If anyone's been flying drones for a little while, you know what I mean. And the camera quality on this is actually amazing. So they've got a four thirds image sensor in there from Hasselblad, 20 megapixel camera, and you can change your aperture from F11 all the way down to 2.8. Back when I had an original Mavic or even the Phantoms, those cameras really struggled, especially if you didn't have sunlight even. If it was an overcast day, you'd even notice it wasn't, the quality of them wasn't that great. But when the sun started going down and you wanted to shoot some sunset or blue hour, that's where the drones really struggled. So I'm extremely happy with how this performed. And in the end, even though we went through some hardship of trying to find the best place for the car to be, the best positioning, we didn't want to roll the car. We didn't want to get tracks and footprints and stuff all over it. It was all worth it because these drone shots are probably some of my favorite photos I've ever taken. All these photos you've seen in today's video have been edited with my V2 presets actually, even though I do have V3 presets out. They come in a pack of 25 plus 25 walkthrough tutorials that show you how to use each individual preset to the best of its ability, plus some extra Lightroom tutorials in there as well, and 25 of my raw images for you to practice your editing on. So I've actually got my own North Borders website now, which is linked in the description, but I have some other websites down there that a link to some other preset packs you can get that I sell with Liam. If you want to know more about the photography equipment I used in today's video, that's also linked all down in the description where you can find it on Amazon. Shout out to Jack for bringing his Land Cruiser out. Also, I have a photography competition that I'll be hosting very soon with some cool prizes. So keep a lookout for that. It's going to be coming out in a few videos. If I taught you something in today's video, maybe you can leave a like down below or help us out by hitting subscribe. With that all said and done, keep having yourself a shit one and I will see you in the next one. Did you purposely give me 24? Is that a 24? Yeah. Fuck, <laughs> thought it was the 85. No, you can literally bake an egg on this sand. It's so hot. Yeah, just wanted to share it with you. Yeah, that's it, bye.